Good morning, and welcome to St. John Newman Roman Catholic Church as we celebrate the life of Kevin Jr. We encourage everyone to participate within the liturgy in both the spoken and sung prayer. The order of service you are given contains the responses as well as the hymns that were chosen for this Mass. If you have not received an order of service, kindly raise your hand and one of our ministers will be able to provide you with one. Also at this time, we ask that you please turn off or silence your cell phones to prevent any distractions during the Mass. We thank you for coming today. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Kevin Jr. died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him in his eternal glory. When Kevin was baptized, not too far from here at St. Francis de Sales Parish, his parents would have clothed him in a white garment. And that garment was a sign of his Christian dignity. And he, they would have been instructed to help Kevin Jr. bring that unstained garment to heaven as he meets the Lord. And so we now clothe his mortal remains with this white garment as a symbol of his baptismal garment. Let us now take our brother into the church. Oh, let us now place the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over death. Turn it around. Thank you. Let us now take our brother into the church for his funeral mass. Let us join in singing our entrance hymn.
we gather here today to celebrate Kevin Jr.'s life, to celebrate how he touched each of us, how he was a good son, a good brother, a good friend, a good boyfriend, a good nephew, a good disciple of Christ. We give thanks for our relationship with him, and we, we lift him up in thanksgiving today to God. Even in the midst of our mourning and our tears, our sadness, we give thanks for the gift he is still to us. We also gather to celebrate his eternal homecoming and our belief in eternal life with God. And we give thanks to God that that's possible, that God loves us so much that he's prepared a place for each and every one of us. And he's prepared a place for our brother, Kevin. And so as we think about Kevin Jr. and how he touched our lives, let us pause for a moment before our opening prayer to think about how he impacted our lives. Let us give thanks to God. Let us pray. Holy Lord, almighty and eternal God, hear our prayers for your servant, Kevin Jr., whom you have summoned out of this world. Forgive his sins and failings and grant him a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Let him pass unharmed through the gates of death to dwell with the blessed in light, as you promised to Abraham and his children forever. Accept Kevin Jr. into your safekeeping, and on the last day of judgment, raise him up with all the saints to inherit your eternal kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I invite you to be seated now, and let us listen attentively to the words of sacred scripture. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction but they are in peace. For if before men, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Pastized a little, they shall be greatly blessed because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth and the faithful shall abide with him in love. Because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. Will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of God? Will anguish, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, 
nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Gird your loins and light your lamps and be like servants who wait their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, Blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when a thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you to be seated for a moment. The parish's deepest condolences go out to you, Christy and Kevin, your entire family, and all those who called him friend, called him family member. This tragedy stuns us. It's um, heartbreaking, and it calls us to go back to basics, so to speak. And Difficulties like this of profound loss, the death, the murder of someone we love, make us go back to the roots of who we are as a Christian people. We start asking really big questions, and sometimes we don't have the answers, and we struggle. We may feel like we fumble through, but as Christians, as people who claim Christ as our brother and our friend, we know that he is with us now. He draws ever closer as you grieve. And tragedy always stuns us. 
This is especially true when the, we experience the tragic and sudden death of someone we love so dearly, who is so animated, so full of life. We're shocked as individuals, and we're visibly shaken as a community of faith when we learn about an unexpected and premature death. We are numb by the suddenness and the horror of it all, the horror of which some of you actually had to live through, the violence. And we cannot understand it. And although we have questions, we may not have adequate answers. And there is no satisfactory explanation for what happened. And perhaps sometimes we may not even want to believe or accept the person we have known, the person we have cherished so well and loved so much is dead. In a sense, as individuals and as a community, we can be paralyzed. We can be suspended in our disbelief of what has happened. And there's a huge emptiness today in our hearts because Kevin Jr whom you have known and loved has been taken from us. It is so unfair and so cruel that he has been taken away from us in this way. Kevin was so full of life, happy, kind, very personable. He was beautiful. His work in this life was not finished. He was in the prime of his life had so much to look forward to at the age of 22, whether it was a future with a family of his own or with his career. He had been the youngest apprentice operator at the New Allegiance Stadium. I'm told it was quite the feather in his cap and a source of pride for him and his family and friends. Yes, indeed, he had a bright future and he was a man of faith. And this is, he still had so much to do, so much to give. And this was his plan as a child of God. We could be tempted to say as a community, to say that if he had been an elderly person or incapacitated in some way, and his death had been uh, drawn out, it would be easier to accept in this tragedy. We would be sad, of course, but we would accept his death in such circumstances because we might have been able to say goodbye, give our farewells, and we would have had the belief that he lived a long life and that he would have been able to live that life well. And so, but our grief is enormous, and what are we to do with that grief? What are we to do, and how are we to cope Today, more than ever, we need to listen attentively to the message of the Word of God. Only our faith in God can sustain us and prevent us from remain, dead, remain suspended in disbelief as we mourn Kevin Jr.'s death and struggle to cope with our sense of loss and pain. Only the Word of God can offer us consolation and hope when we are confronted with the frailty and uncertainty of human life. Everyone here, I believe, can identify very easily with what was read to us from our first reading, which was taken from the Book of Wisdom. We heard their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like annihilation. Each word certainly applied to Kevin's untimely death. However, we must also listen to the reassurances in that reading, concerning Kevin and, and the many other people who have died. And they're offered to us through the word of God in the book of wisdom. We hear, but they are at peace. Those who are faithful will live with him in love, for the grace and mercy await those he has chosen. 
our faith in the risen Christ. Kevin Jr.'s faith in the risen Christ encouraged him and it encourages us to hope that your son, brother, and friend are now in a peace and enjoying eternal life. We pray that through God's mercy and forgiveness that Kevin is now in God's hands as he reflected Christ's love in this world, may he now be enveloped by that light, that love in eternal life. What about us who remain behind? What about us who gather today for this funeral mass with Kevin's family and friends who are heartbroken? The word of God, in addition to reassuring us about him, as a relevant and compelling message for us, a message that if we listen to it and act accordingly, will ensure that we will be ready for death whenever it comes, whether suddenly or in tragic circumstances or slowly in the end of a terminal illness or old age. In the gospel reading from Luke, which we read was read to us today, Jesus says, you too must stand ready because the Son of Man is coming in an hour you do not expect. Strange words, perhaps, but true words. None of us knows where our life in this world will end. How many of us are ready for death at this moment? The only meaningful way to be ready for death is prepare purposefully by loving God and by all and all God's people in everything we do. Kevin, our brother in faith, attempted to do this. Was he perfect? I don't think there's a perfect human being out there, right? Only Jesus Christ. I'm sure Kevin Jr. had his own struggles as he lived out the gospel message. But that's what's beautiful about Jesus. Jesus loves us for the struggle. Jesus loves us that we love him and want to be with him. Jesus loved Kevin Jr. And as we heard in that gospel reading, if we are found ready when the master of the house comes, He'll switch it around. He won't expect Kevin Jr. to wait on him, but we're told that the master will wait on the servant. Kevin Jr., a servant of the Lord, is now being waited on by his good friend and savior, Jesus Christ. So yes, there is a definite lesson for us who do we want waiting on us when our time comes? And this, these are sorrowful and lonely days, difficult days, sad days. But because we trust in Jesus' promise, elsewhere in John's gospel, he says, I will go to prepare a place for you and then I will come and take you to myself. You know, this idea that Jesus is there for us. Jesus is rooting for us, and he's prepared a place for all those he calls friends. This gives us hope, even in the midst of pain and suffering. Yes, life and death are definitely mysterious things, and they're full of surprises. Some of the surprises that we experience are remarkable and they are rewarding, and they bring us happiness. Other surprises that come our way upon our journey of life can be shocking, disturbing, and sad. We need to be prepared for the unexpected, as we heard in the gospel. We will never be unprepared, though, if we use properly the various opportunities and possibilities given to us in our lives. We need to celebrate life and live it fully while we have it, like Kevin Jr. did. 
Then, when tragedy happens, indeed, we will be shocked and stunned, but we will not remain suspended in disbelief for too long, because even in our grief, our faith will enable us to continue to live in hope until we meet God in death. May Kevin Jr. rest in peace, and may his life inspire us to live lives of Christian joy and love. Let this be Kevin Jr.'s legacy. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes on behalf of us. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord, we now join our prayers with you. In baptism, Kevin Jr. received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother, Kevin Jr., was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We, the family and friends of Kevin Jr., seek comfort and consolation. Heal our pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother, Kevin Jr. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the people who have gathered here today whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we prepare the altar.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Kevin Jr., we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Newman, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for your unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George Leo, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Kevin Jr., whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us give this us day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the, the power, power, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
peace of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not, not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my, and my soul, soul shall be healed. healed. For the reception of Holy Communion, we invite everyone to come forward under the direction of our ministers. We will start from the front rows with the families through the center aisles, then please proceed to the side aisles when you return to your seats. We ask that you please keep your masks on when you are receiving and receive the Eucharist in the hand only. Once you have received the Eucharist, kindly step aside and lift your mask to be able to consume them. Thank you.
And I will be. 
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Kevin Jr. may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Mendiola family thanks you for your comforting presence in Mass today and humbly requests your continued prayers. Interment will be at Palm Northwest, which is located just north of the Jones exit on the 215, immediately following the Mass. All are welcome to attend. At the conclusion of Mass, Kevin's immediate family will follow the casket to the hearse. Please remain in your seats until dismissed by the ushers and then exit through the main aisle to the parking lot. And while doing so, please maintain your social distancing. Thank you. Our brother Kevin Jr. has fallen asleep in Christ. Confident in our hope of eternal life, let us commend him to the loving mercy of our Father and let our prayers go with him. He was adopted as God's son in holy baptism and nourished at the table of the Lord. May he now inherit the promise of eternal life and take his place at the table of God's children in heaven. Let us pray also on our own behalf that we who now mourn and are saddened may one day go forth with our brother to meet the Lord of life when he appears in glory. Father of mercies, we commend our brother Kevin Jr. to the sure and certain hope that together of all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Kevin Jr. in this life, 
They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I always encourage people as we make our way to his final resting place that you go in a spirit of prayer because the Mass doesn't really end until the services are concluded at the cemetery. So as you journey forth from here, uh, you might want, want to turn on talk radio or your favorite uh, Christmas hymns. But maybe spend your time in the prayer if you're carpooling, talking about Kevin and praying for him until you meet us at his graveside. Also, I can't stress enough how important it is that as you depart, part with social distancing in mind. Once again, this isn't because I want to be a, a jerk. It's that I care for all of you. And I don't want anybody to get sick. So please listen to the ushers. They know how to get you out to the parking lot. So they will... Uh, dismiss you in an orderly, safe manner. I'll see you at the cemetery. Let us now take our brother to his place of rest. 